Hey, what's up everybody? It's Mr. Boylan, and today, what in the heck are we going to be doing in this video? Our content objective for the day. I can calculate percent composition. But let's break that down a little bit. I mean, what the heck is percent composition? How are we going to be able to calculate it? We are first going to determine the molar mass of an individual element in a compound. Two, determine the molar mass of the entire compound. And then three, use those molar masses of the individual elements in the compound and the molar mass of the whole compound to calculate the percent composition of a given compound. So, let's first talk about some elements. Uh, elements made out of one type of atom. For example, carbon. It's 100% carbon. Let's take a look at copper. Another element, 100% copper because it's just one type of atom. Oh man, sulfur, another element. I think, oh yes, 100% sulfur. And then we have things that are maybe not elements, but made out of just one thing, like Mr. Boylan. 100% awesome, I think yes. The question then becomes, what happens when those things are not made out of just one element? Like, I don't know, compounds. What percent of this compound is copper and what percent of this compound is sulfur? I don't know how we're going to figure that out. Well, that's where this idea of percent composition comes into play, which is the whole point of this video. And basically, we're going to be looking at determining the percent by mass of each element in a compound. Now, the reason we're able to do this is thanks to the law of definite proportions, which simply states that the molar ratio of elements in a specific compound is constant, regardless of the compound source or method of preparation. Now, if you are wondering what the heck the law of definite proportions means after that obviously very clear definition, let's take a look at water, one of my favorite compounds. If we had a glass of water from our faucet or the mighty oceans themselves, both of these things contain water, and both of them will have a molar ratio of hydrogen to oxygen of 2 to 1. It doesn't matter where we get the sample from, if it's water, it's got to be 2 moles of hydrogen to 1 mole of oxygen, no matter what. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Mr. Boylan, the ocean's water mm, doesn't taste the same as the water in that glass. Truth! However, keep in mind that there are other things in the water in the ocean that may make it taste a little bit different. Uh, but the water itself will always be two moles of hydrogen to one mole of oxygen. Law of definite proportions! So, we can apply that idea to some percent composition calculations. Here's a quick look, and in a nutshell, tells you what percent composition is all about. Let's go back to that compound copper one sulfide. As you take a look, we first need to know what is the mass of copper in one mole of that compound. Well, for every one mole of copper two sulfide, there are two mole of copper. And therefore, if I want to figure out the mass of the, just the copper is in that compound, I have to go to my magical periodic table of the elements. As you look at the molar mass there, one mole of copper will be 63.546 grams. Therefore, the mass of two moles of copper in that one mole of compound is going to be 127.092 grams of copper. We can do that same thing with sulfur. Keep in mind, though, we've only got one mole of sulfur in this compound. And that one mole of sulfur, no, not 63.546 grams. It is 32.066 grams. Again, periodic table will help you out with this. Therefore, the mass uh, in grams of sulfur in this one mole of copper one sulfide is 32.066 grams. Therefore, the molar mass of this compound is 159.158 grams. <sighs> now, before we move on here, some of you brilliant folks might already understand where we're going here. Think to yourself, is more of this compound by mass copper? or is more of this compound by mass sulfur? Let's take a look. And so as we look at the math to solve for what the percent composition by mass is for this compound, it's just the mass of the part divided by the mass of the whole compound. And if you take a look at how that works out for copper, 127 grams over the total mass of the compound, approximately 159 grams, times 100 gives you about 80% by mass of this compound is copper. Likewise, you complete a similar calculation for the sulfur content. Uh, although this time, notice we're using the part sulfur, 
over the same whole mass of the compound. Uh, and as you take a look at the math on your screen, the majority of this compound by mass is copper. About 80% is copper, whereas only 20% of this compound by mass is sulfur. The important thing to keep in mind is again that law of definite proportions. Uh, because the ratio of copper to sulfur and copper one sulfide is always two to one, regardless of the size of your sample, it's always gonna be about 80% copper and 20% sulfur. It doesn't matter if you have a little cup of copper one sulfide or even an entire ocean of copper one sulfide, it's always gonna be 80% copper, 20% sulfide. Boom, percent composition, and we're done. And of course, a quick reference, to let you know where I pulled all of those images from.